Hi, I'm back. After finishing a PhD in chemistry, I now hopefully have enough time on my hands I can do a few videos. Uh, thanks to anybody who recommended countries they wanted to see next, but the first thing I wanted to do was something a little closer to home, which for me is Canada. And Canada also fits in well with my history of covering countries that have a lot of land but not a lot of coverage. Uh, and Canada fits that bill, although obviously there's a lot more coverage than, say, Mongolia, so expect less karma. Carmeta, and uh, that might be good for some people. We're going to be doing GeoGuessr tips for no moving, um, uh, but panning and zooming is presumably what this will be most useful for, although of course use it how you like. And um, I do most of my playing on the official GeoGuessr Canada map in Explorer mode. There may be better maps out there, but friendly reminder that I'm far from a professional doing this. Just sharing some tips and having fun. Uh, unlike many other countries, I live and explore Canada, so I can show off most of the countries with pictures just from my library. I've lived a lot of places from Quebec to British Columbia, um, which might actually be bad for teaching it, because sometimes I can get a good guess just with vibes, uh, but I think I've got a treat lined up with you, for you with this uh, Canada series, because Canada is large enough that I'm not going to cover it all with one video. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the way I'm going to break down this series into regions, and then we're going to go over some very basic ways to tell that you are in Canada in this video, and especially how to differentiate it from the US. Then in this video, we'll go over the very general geography and infrastructure tips for the country, and then I'm going to finish with some homework before the regional showcases start, because I think you'll get a lot more out of it. Um, a lot of this is probably going to be a review for a good GeoGuessr player, but you need to understand the background for Canada to get a lot out of regional breakdowns, and I think there's probably something there for everybody. Uh, the video will be broken up into five parts. So first, we'll talk about British Columbia and the Northern Territories, and each video is going to begin with province-specific tips before we get into region guessing for each of those provinces. And after the West, we'll talk about the Prairie Provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. After we identify the province-specific meta, I'll go over the general geography. Because even though these regions are selected for having similar geography, there's still a lot of variation to be aware of. Ontario and Quebec each deserve their own video. Quebec, of course, if you don't know, being the French-speaking province in Canada. And the next step of each region will cover city-specific tips. So knowing city meta is maybe a little underappreciated, but it's extremely useful in Canada, as well as other countries. But at least one third of the coverage is in the largest 20 cities or so. And many of these cities contain reliable meta that allow you to plonk immediately with total confidence. So you'll learn to love power lines, street signs, and especially fire hydrants. I love boring my friends and family about my favorite fire hydrants. The last region we cover are the maritime provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland and Labrador. I forgot to shade in Labrador, which is uh, this section up here, um, because I've never actually been placed there, but I did just check, and there is coverage there, so I'll talk about it. Um, and after we go through province meta, geography, and then cities, I'll give some rural meta for each region, and I'll teach you more about power lines, warning signs, stuff like that. So Canada is very big. It's hard to give tips for the country as a whole. The very basics include things like driving on the right, yellow center lines, so you should, in most coverage, only be confusing Canada with other countries in the Americas. For newer players, it might definitely be possible to confuse the Canadian prairies with Uruguay or Argentina. Now, of course, the sun is in the south if you're in Uruguay, or sorry, the sun's in the south in Canada, and then the north in Uruguay and Argentina. But on a cloudy day, um, you can tell them apart, both Uruguay and Argentina are more likely to use black car, and have concrete poles instead of wooden poles in Canada. Uh, not to mention, of course, they speak Spanish, if you ever get lucky. Um, these yellow and white center lines are also common in uh, Uruguay and Argentina, and not really common in Canada or the US. But by far the most common country to confuse with Canada is USA, which has similar vehicles, similar houses, similar landscapes. We're going to go over some basic tips for differentiating them, and most of these tips aren't particularly new, but it's, it's hard for me to know who to give proper credit for in most cases. Um, probably the best video series on USA tips are from Sh Chicago Geographer, and I will try to link his tutorial series here if I can. 
um, but more or less in the order that I find them reliable and useful. In the US, all yield signs have the word, word yield in them. And this is part of a trend whereby US signs are more likely to include text. So for example, railway crossing in the US, one way on the one way signs, and no entry uh, signs. So do not enter here in the US. Um, but you will notice that it's not 100%. Uh, in the previous thing, we had no entry in Canada and we have wrong way. You, you know, you have to kind of learn which signs will have text in the US, but it's certainly more likely to have text in the US. Another very important and very well-known clue is speed limit signs, so I won't take too long on them, but kilometers per hour in Canada, miles per hour in America, and um, the numbers are going to be lower in the US for that reason. Uh, Canada always uses maximum. There, there are more signs that differentiate Canada and the US and that differentiate Canadian provinces, which we'll go into. But some of these signs are very rare and it wouldn't make for a good YouTube video. But a very useful tip I find, and I haven't seen discussed, is underground telephone cables. So in Canada, underground cables, telephone cables at least, are marked by this orange cylinder on top of a metal pole. Well, in America, you get a very different looking metal cone that's half orange on top. And you'll see these everywhere in cities and rural areas, very useful. Now, both Canada and US have a lot of different car coverage, but Canada has more generation two coverage, which is identified by the wide blur around the car. And this is my dog, which is why I chose this picture. And the US gets more of the very grainy generation one coverage, which Canada very rarely has, but there's generation two in these states, there's generation one in Canada, so this is not a perfect clue. And speaking of non-perfect clues, you're much more likely to get uh, metal signposts in the US, especially in rural areas. You'll get metal signposts in both, um, in, in cities in both countries. Uh, the US is a little bit more likely to use rumble strips on the side of the road, and especially these rumble strips with periodic breaks in them, as I've shown in this picture. I don't think I've ever seen that in Canada. And then a little tongue in cheek, but US is covered with American flags. So if you're in a residential neighborhood and you don't see the stars and stripes, maybe you're in Canada. Um, there are more US Canada tips, but I'll save them for the regional videos because they'll, they'll be better appreciated. There. So assume that you know you're in Canada. Now we want to start region guessing. What general area are we in? Future videos are going to be loosely based off these regions, so it's important to understand the general outline. Uh, to the far north, essentially, it has very few trees as well as very little coverage in this far north. But in the territory of Yukon in the top left, there's a lot of mountains, a lot of pines, so I've grouped it with the western province of British Columbia for part one. All of the west coast is very mountainous, ending along the Alberta BC border here in red. So there's mountains. Here and then we get to the prairies and the boreal plains on the right. And that prairies is going to form part two of the series. And then somewhere near the Manitoba and Ontario border, you hit the boreal shield or the Canadian shield, as we'll normally call it. And this is mostly grouped in with Ontario. But if anything, this section of uh, Ontario, you're more likely to confuse with Newfoundland if you get very unlucky. And you can see why. And then finally, we get the major population centers further south, where all, like half of Canadians actually live. So I'll be covering how to region guess this part of Ontario and how to tell it apart from some of the maritime provinces that aren't Newfoundland. Now, architecture is a good general clue when you're in a town or city. So in general, Europeans settled Canada from east to west. So the homes in the east tend to be older, and there's a lot more brick homes, especially in Ontario and Quebec. Well, out west, you get more wood-framed homes. Um, and I'm not just talking about size, because, of course, there's new building going on outside of Toronto all the time. But um, you tend to see large brick homes in Ontario, and you'll see different sidings out west. Or you'll see occasional brick homes, but a lot less. And then the trees just tend to be much more densely packed out east as well. And then hopefully you can just read these as I'm talking. but other things, there's more driveways out east, there's more physical mailboxes out east, especially um, standalone mailboxes not attached to the house. Whereas out west, I'm saying that there's, uh, I mean, these are, not all of these are great uh, reliable clues, but the, the light posts are more likely to be isolated, not just attached to the wooden power pole. Um, and then 
it's just, I mean, the mountainous BC region is pretty easy usually, but you're going to have more spaced out trees, more trucks, that kind of thing in the prairies. So some of the things to look for. Speaking of power poles, briefly I did. Um, I'll go into these more in later videos, but one main thing to highlight is that the very white poles um, with a lot of knots on them, that tends to be something you see a lot more out east. Uh, a lot in Quebec, a lot in the Maritimes, definitely some in Ontario. There are white looking poles out west, but they tend to be bigger with fewer knots in them. And um, some of the poles seem to be treated and look uh, quite green, and those tend to be more out west than you would ever find out east. But there's a lot of variation. My uh, joke here is that this is a map where I've outlined every power pole in Canada and represented it with a dot, which is obviously not true, but that should give you some indication of what kind of power poles you should see. And we'll keep going over those in the provinces. But before we get into the regions, you have to do your homework. And it's hard to know what to really say here because you want to strike a balance between memorizing things and that are necessary to get a lot out of Canada and just wasting your time. Would it be useful to memorize every town in Manitoba? Yeah, it would be useful, but it's not actually, a, uh, it wouldn't be good YouTube content. So at least you want to know the names of every province and territory, and at least the capital city. Territories aren't actually that important. And of course you don't need to spell them, but for all the homework here, there are Sporkle quizzes in the description if you want to practice. Um, next up, you should definitely learn the Canadian license plates. They're much easier to learn than U.S. plates because there aren't as many and the provinces don't change them as often as they do in the USA. Um, the provinces are divided pretty randomly between those that use front plates and those that don't use front plates. So the provinces with front plates are shown on the right. And then I just realized that New Brunswick stopped using front plates in 2019. So you'll see some mixed coverage there. But the highlights for me are that Alberta and Saskatchewan look very similar in their geography, but Alberta has red plates and Saskatchewan has green plates. So remember that. Uh, and I want to get to that tip last because some of the easiest plates to identify for me are Nova Scotia with the blue ship in the middle, and especially Manitoba with the symmetrical green trees on each side. Um, that's very easy to identify from a distance and know you're in Manitoba. And then an advanced tip is that even though British Columbia and Ontario are usually easy to tell apart based on geography, especially within Vancouver or Toronto, Vancouver, BC and Toronto, Ontario, those cities can look quite similar. And the advanced tip is that the back plates in British Columbia usually have a very visible registration sticker in the center bottom of the British Columbia plates. So you know that this is a BC plate, not an Ontario plate, because the two plates do look quite similar. Um, now we're going to get pretty serious. Canada has just enough area codes that it's really useful to remember them and not impossible to remember them. So once again, link to a Sporkle quiz. And this map is wildly outdated because it doesn't include new cell phone area codes. And I've done that on purpose. Um, First, most businesses are still using old phone numbers, so these area codes are by far the most useful. Here's an example of a Canadian telephone number, and the first three digits are the area code. So this tells you that you're in Quebec City, or you could be in nearby cities, um, but you're, you're definitely in that region. Now, the other reason that I haven't included cell phone numbers is that uh, Canadian phone companies stopped charging long distance within Canada like a decade ago. So most people aren't even changing their phone numbers when they move anymore. By far, if you've memorized these numbers, that that will be your best friend. And last, probably least useful, is the provincial flags. So you will usually only see provincial flags outside official government buildings, with the exception of Quebec, with the fleur de lise here, which might be more common than a Canadian flag in Quebec. A special shout out goes to the Acadian flags, which can be quite useful in some rounds and are less known about. Acadia refers to a historical colony, I think, of France, and it comprised large portion of the Maritimes and Eastern Quebec, but now it's most likely to be in Northern New Brunswick. Um, so keep an eye out for that. So with that, I think I will wave goodbye until the next video where we cover British Columbia and the Northern Territories. Cheers.